Welcome to Weights and Biases Fully Connected User Conference. I'm Lucas Bewald, the CEO and co-founder of Weights and Biases. And our goal with Weights and Biases is to build useful tools to support you, the ML engineers building and deploying machine learning models. Now, the most important and toughest part of building great products for people like you, especially in 2023, is anticipating where the machine learning industry is moving. And so my goal with this presentation is actually to take you through our big predictions and our thinking around how machine learning is changing and what new problems we are anticipating and what we can do together to push forward the state of the art and have as much positive impact on the world as possible. Let me start by walking you through the data that we're looking at. And then I wanna take you through the big trends that we've identified starting at the beginning of 2023. This is rapid growth in production ML deployments, rapid growth in the size of machine learning teams, and rapid growth in the volume of meaningful applied research. As weights and biases has become an industry standard tool, we've started to collect more and more data. And for the first time, I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that we're seeing on our platform. First of all, you might expect this, we track a ton of compute hours and the volume of compute hours is accelerating. At first, this growth was probably due to adoption of weights and biases, but now this growth mainly comes from the general trend towards longer and bigger training runs. We started tracking library use at the end of 2019 in order to understand which integrations to prioritize. And since the beginning, and this might surprise you, PyTorch has been the clear number one ML framework. Lately though, we see some changes. We see the amount of hugging face, which is obviously complementary with PyTorch growing. Maybe more surprising, we see that XGBoost, the famous boosted tree library, and Lightning, a newer research framework built on top of PyTorch, alternating, holding the number three spot for most of 2022. So Jonathan Geifman asked us a great question. What are the most popular random seeds on weights and biases? And so we pulled the data for him. The top random seed, the number one, makes total sense. But the next three might be a little harder to explain. 42, 920, 3,407. Serious nerd points if you know why this is happening. We can also look at more practical things, like what are the most popular optimizers, which turn out to be L, B, F, G, S, and Atom. But we sort of suspect that that has more to do with the framework defaults than the real efficacy of these techniques. We also see a strong correlation between learning rates and accuracy, which certainly warrants more investigation. And I should say, if this stuff piques your interest, feel free to send us ideas for more analysis or even send us your resume as we are hiring. And one of the really fun things about the machine learning field is that the state of the art is constantly improving. Sometimes as consumers, we feel like there's this punctuated equilibrium of breakthroughs, but if you really go and look at the data, like this graph in The Economist of the state of the art of speech recognition accuracy, you see that error rates have been steadily dropping since the 90s. Of course, as a user of this technology, it can feel like speech recognition suddenly went from incredibly annoying to fantastic when it crosses a specific threshold, but the reality is that it's been continuously improving since we started working on it. So what's coming in 2023? The biggest, most important trend happening in ML right now is a rapid shift into production deployments. This graph summarizes how quickly production deployments could start coming. It's a survey of enterprises, and 14% say they have production models deployed, while 47% say they plan to deploy models in the next two years. That's an absolutely massive rate of change. But should we take enterprises at their word? Machine learning has this long history of overpromising and underdelivering, And it started here with Frank Rosenblatt, the inventor of neural nets, interviewed in the New York Times in 1958, claiming that perceptrons will be able to instantly translate speech in one language into another language, something that might actually happen in the next few years. But this is almost 70 years after this prediction. And Rosenblatt is far from the only offender. I don't know if anyone remembers IBM Watson, after winning at Jeopardy, IBM made all kinds of wild predictions about the state of machine learning, and then a few years ago went completely quiet. And of course you have Elon Musk in 2019 predicting a really truly self-driving Tesla happening in 2020. Now, the progress in autonomous vehicles is really impressive, and I might be tempted to let him off the hook here, 
except that this isn't the only time he's made this kind of claim. I guess here he's a little more cautious, saying that self-driving is two years away, but that was actually back in 2015. So we say this with some humility. We believe in 2023, the growth in production ML will outperform the hype, and there is a lot of hype. Now, why do we have the confidence to say this? One place it comes from is that we've been working with the most transformative companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Stability virtually since they were formed, and we've seen their progress firsthand. And maybe more importantly, we work with a ton of the enterprises that have successfully deployed machine learning into production, and they span virtually every industry. Back when I graduated and went into machine learning, there were just a handful of companies doing real ML. And even when I started my last ML company, Crowdflower, in 2008, machine learning was really confined to mostly tech and a little bit of e-commerce. And then we saw a rise in autonomous vehicles, but still, not much. Now, at Waste and Biases, we see machine learning everywhere. One notable new place is in healthcare and pharma, our fastest growing segment. But we also see it in industrial farming, where customers, including John Deere, have actually built and deployed autonomous tractors that you can buy right now. We also see virtually every major bank using ML for a number of things, including fraud detection, which is absolutely a mission-critical application. And we see ML as a core enabler of new industries, such as satellite data. And we are still constantly finding new unexpected applications, like Formula One racing, where several of the teams built models and deployed them with weights and biases in order to get an edge. And in all these applications, there are a number of companies we are working with who haven't deployed their models yet. So our observation is that even without new breakthroughs in performance, we are on the precipice of a massive switch to ML in production. But of course, there are breakthroughs, like Dolly and ChatGPT, which might seem like toys at first, but actually open up a massive swath of totally new ways to use machine learning. And if you don't believe me, or you don't think the industry cares, look at what happened to BuzzFeed's stock price when all they did was announce that they were thinking about working with ChatGPT. And this is important. The technology is poised to keep improving. Transformers, the underlying tech behind the big 2022 breakthroughs like Dolly and GPT, is still getting consistently better as more compute is added. And all of our big customers are adding compute and training bigger models right now. So we expect to see a ton of further breakthroughs in 2023. And of course, rapid growth in production ML comes with serious operational challenges. Google was one of the first to deploy ML into mission-critical applications and wrote an ominous article called Machine Learning, the High Interest Credit Card of Technical Debt. And of course, when Google breaks, someone gets an irrelevant ad or Google loses money. When Tesla's machine learning malfunctions, someone could die. When Genentech's machine learning malfunctions, they could spend years investigating a worthless drug. Another major trend is the rapid growth in machine learning team size. Now you might ask, is this really an interesting trend? Machine learning engineer has been the fastest growing job for years. But most of the companies in our space talk about democratizing AI. They imagine a future where anyone can build machine learning models and machine learning engineers are really unnecessary. And this makes total sense. If you talk to execs in large companies, nearly all are hoping for the democratization of AI because ML engineers are incredibly expensive. And there's another big movement, the rise of prompt engineering. Some of our best customers, such as OpenAI, imagine a future where ML model training is not even necessary. The real skill is asking a model clearly for what you need. We're also in the middle of a recession, which has affected tech companies the most. Companies everywhere, especially tech, are looking for places to cut costs. So will ML teams continue to grow? We are betting big that the answer is yes, that ML teams will continue to grow in 2023 faster than ever before. And one simple reason that we think that is that according to surveys such as this one done by Credit Suisse, ML is the top area for enterprise budget prioritization. And this survey was done in the middle of 2022. And what happened right after the survey came out is that DALI, and even more importantly, ChatGPT launched. And this made companies like Google realize that falling behind in ML is an existential threat. Just like no successful company would outsource their software development, 
no successful company is going to outsource their ML development, leading to a massive demand for ML talent. We see this inside our customers. When we first talked to Genentech, they had no ML team. Now their team is over 100 people and growing fast. This is while Genentech as a business faces major headwinds and cuts in other places. ML is not an area to cut in 2023. Of course, as teams grow, they face new challenges. Building models or doing anything as a team of two is very different than building models as a team of 200. Companies need to find new ways to work together and keep track of what they're doing. The third big trend we see is the rapid growth of applied ML research. There is no doubt that the volume of ML research is growing exponentially. But does this really matter for industry? Historically, the purpose of research has been to influence industry far out into the future. In machine learning though, research has really emphasized model performance on a fixed set of data, which is a very unrealistic real world scenario. Andre Karpathy talked about it in his keynote at my last company's conference, noting that his focus pre and post PhD were incredibly different. But this is changing. Research has started to emphasize data collection and industry has been publishing larger and larger and more realistic data sets to work on. The state of the art is improving rapidly and new techniques can be the difference between a model working for a business purpose and just not being relevant. And research has started to really emphasize things that companies care about, like model explainability, production monitoring, and more. There's also a wonderful trend where academic papers authors now typically produce useful code with their papers that makes it really practical for industry to immediately adopt what they're doing. And we're also seeing paper authors publish their weights and biases experiments to help someone pick up where they left off. So what does this trend mean? Well, what we're seeing is that technologies change inside companies faster than ever before. First, PyTorch replaced TensorFlow inside our customers because our customers wanted to quickly adopt research papers published in PyTorch. This was a major change inside many, many companies. But now, this is happening all the time as companies rapidly adopt new technologies like Hugging Face and new techniques. Will companies be able to keep up with this rate of change? In summary, we see three important trends and three big emerging needs in the ML space. Rapid growth in real-world production ML, leading to a deep need for standardization and reliability in ML deployments. Rapid growth in the size of ML teams, forcing teams to learn new ways to collaborate on ML projects at scale. And rapid growth in applied ML research, causing an incredible amount of pressure to adapt and change workflows rapidly as the state of the art improves. So what is Weights and Biases doing about this? Let's talk about the issues one by one, starting with the need for best practices around ML and production. Now, ML and production has been the focus of my career. Since we've started Weights and Biases, we've been working on building an end-to-end -end industrial strength workflow that our customers can use. Our approach has always been to build useful tools one at a time to serve real pain points and then make them work together as a cohesive platform. We've also launched a class called Effective ML Ops on best practices for deploying ML in the real world that includes all the learnings we've had from our customers and we've made it available to the world for free. We've moved our popular model registry, a critical piece of ML Ops infrastructure, into general availability, and we'll be talking more about this today. We've launched a product called Launch that can be triggered off of the model registry and helps customers build reliable CI CD platforms for ML products, and we'll also talk about that a lot more today. What about collaboration? This is what Weights and Biases has been known for, and we've gotten an early look at the collaboration challenges that happen with huge customers like Toyota and NVIDIA, who each have over 500 ML engineers collaborating daily on our platform. The most important feature for collaboration that we've had since the beginning is reports, and actually only 10% of our users make use of them, but we think it's one of the most critical things that we offer. Nearly everyone that tries it says they can't imagine how they worked without it. We added long requested universal search to help teams find all the important insights that they're generating. 
We've added now the ability to generate reports completely through an API, which hopefully will encourage more ML engineers to automatically make them. Finally, what are we doing about the pressing need to integrate the latest ML research? We've always been passionate about integrating research into our platform so that our users could have easy access to it. For example, our parameter importance panel is something I personally worked on, and it builds a random forest on top of your hyperparameters to predict how they affect an output parameter. It's something that ML engineers have done on an ad hoc basis for quite a long time, but now it makes it trivial to access this, and it makes this technique more useful. We have a fantastic embedding projector that's useful across many domains, and we've made a lot of improvements to it recently. But the big internal project is Weave, something you can see in parts of our platform where you can actually go in and edit the data that your panels are using directly. We plan to open this up in a big way and allow for more flexible use of our platform so that researchers can publish their work directly into weights and biases and give everyone simple access to it. Now, we're just getting started and we're still listening to all of you. Most of our good ideas have come from our users, and we hope that you'll tell us what you need so that we can serve you better. If you want even more detail on what's going on in the ML space, we've made a lot of our interviews public with a podcast that we do called Gradient Descent, and it's had everyone from Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, to Berkeley professor Peter Abiel, to Clem, the CEO of Hugging Face. At the end of every episode, I ask guests, what's the hardest part about making machine learning work in the real world? And it's the same question I want to ask all of you right now. Making ML work reliably in production is the big challenge our industry faces, and it's the point of this conference. Let's figure out together how to turn these research breakthroughs into fantastic products.